Last night was the first time I've ever wanted to be on a catamaran. It was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. I learned what it's like to be a Yahtzee cube in a cup and a dice game. A bit of a development overnight. We were looking at this uh, disturbance that was coming up. It wasn't looking to be anything. It has now turned into a tropical storm. We are near Hillsborough. So we're in the pocket of no wind here. Well, yeah, but based on no wind, it is definitely blowing at least <laughs> 20 knots out there right yeah, now. Yeah. Okay, so this is where we're anchored off the seats in Vincent. And uh, we came in last night, I looked at the weather, and there was a bit of a, a bit of a weather system coming, but it wasn't going to be anything. And overnight it developed into a tropical storm and it went over the top of us. Luckily it went north of us, but what we've decided to do is we were going to go and anchor here in Kariku, but what we're deciding to do is get down to the bottom of Grenada. Forecasting a southern wind, so we're going to have a look, see if we can get into this marina that's really nice and sheltered in there so we can go around here somewhere if not we're going to find somewhere to anchor or dock in around here and uh, get away from the uh, southerly swells my name is Merrill Pierce I'm having a pretty good experience I'm on day nine of ten days what happened in the morning when we found out about <laughs> uh, tropical storm Karen what was your feelings and what did you think well I woke up uh, thinking about this beautiful place that we had uh, anchored at the night before. We had taken a brilliant swim in these turquoise and emerald waters. But Simon had this little look of concern on his face. What an opportunity, because now I can see Simon do something fun. Because so far all he's been doing is holding my hand and leading me around and showing me how to do things on the boat. But now we get to do something really exciting. So I was ready to go. So Meryl just put the anchor up for us while I prepared the water. The wind is directly behind us, so we've got about two miles to go and then we're going to turn to the left, so to port, and then we're going to be going up behind Karakou. Goodbye Petite St. Vincent. Goodbye Petite St. Vincent. You're a little guy, but you're great. Yeah, and goodbye St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Yeah. And we're running away from Karen. We're going to so. leave you to that wild woman. You can have her. Yep. Yeah, we don't want her. <laughs> As we were sailing along and leaving Petite St. Vincent, I couldn't help but think it doesn't seem like there's a tropical storm anywhere near us. It was a, a little bit of wind, um, but it was kind of blue skies, and you saw a bit of a cloud bank that looked a bit ominous coming for us. And I did notice there was boats all around kind of coming like leaving and heading south but i felt like oh we probably missed the worst bit because it was going north and and the thing is we were supposed to check in at tyrell bay because we had already checked out of st vincent and the grenadines and had to check into grenada and we had you know a plan as to where we were going to stay so we thought oh it's best just let's get south and as we sailed along it just was so calm and beautiful so it was kind of weird of the storm is about 60 miles that way less than that actually it's sucking all the air out we are now down to less than 10 knots of wind it's just pushing us at about a 45 degree angle away from Grenada even though we're pointing at it drop the stay saw and probably stick the engine on see where we go from there we ended up dropping all the sails because they were just flapping about and but we had such a fantastic treat so we had all these dolphins come to us and they were just uh, playing around at the bow of the boat for about half an hour which was fantastic What kind of dolphins? Because Meryl was our spotter for today. Short snouted spinner dolphin. 
the sale down was pretty easy, wasn't it? It was a piece of cake. In the app, uh, it said that we weren't going to get much wind, and we got just enough. It was just enough to have a, uh, as Simon likes to put it, a cracking sail. Uh, it was nice and smooth and peaceful. We could see the clouds off behind us, but it uh, didn't appear to be much of anything, to tell you the truth. It's cold. It's As we were coming along the side of Grenada, there was, we started to listen to the chatter going on the cruiser nets and hearing that the swell was building up in the lower bays. And we were starting to look at our options and we called the marina but we couldn't get in. And so we thought, well, we could anchor in Grand Nance Bay, but it's renowned for bad holding. And every time we go there, it takes us 10 times to anchor because we can't ever find anything to dig into. So we thought, well, if it's going to be bad weather, stronger winds, we need some place that's, you know, a little bit more secure. And we didn't want to be around a ton of boats either because we already heard boats were dragging. So there was a mooring ball area next to the famous statue park in Grenada and um, there was nobody there and the mooring balls, are they seem to be brand new. So we thought, you know, we're getting tired. Let's pull over here and just go on a mooring ball and see what happens. Okay, so we're on the ball. It's blowing about between 20s and to 35s. Getting a bit more rolly because we've got a lot of fetch and it depends on which way the boat is that we get either bouncing up and down or side and then we get rocky rocky and it gets really quite bad. Quite happy where we are. It's going to be a long night. We're going to do an anchor watch. We've got anchor alarms on. I'm going to do an anchor watch. We're hearing on the radio that lots of boats on the southern bays where the wind and the waves are probably at their worst. There's a lot of boats dragging. We've heard there's one catamaran just gone onto a reef. It's going to be a long night. Oh, hold, hold on. on, hold on, hold on everybody. We came in and all the, there was no one on the, any of the anchor balls, so I picked the one furthest away from any bit of land, just so just in case it did break or we lost a line or something, we'd have time before we went into the rocks or on the reef. So. We got there, Kim did a fantastic job getting the mooring ball. It was a bit blowy, I think it was blowing about 35, 36. The swell wasn't too bad and it was on the nose, so it was good. Just a bit lumpy at first and after a while, oh my goodness me, the wind changed slightly and then the swell was coming around the bottom of the point which I wasn't expecting. I thought it was going to be coming from the southeast, but it, the swell was coming from the southwest, and it was just hitting us on the beam and it just gradually got worse and we ended up not cooking anything because we couldn't and the boat was rocking like it's never rocked before and rolled. Um, it's probably the only time I've ever wanted to be on a cat. <laughs> but we were actually going from almost gunnels to gunnels. These windows over here, they were going underwater at some stage. Everything was crashing about. I went up and stayed up all night until five o'clock in the morning and every half an hour I was coming down and picking stuff off, off the floor and putting it back and just making sure everything stayed as tidy as I possibly could. Okay, as you can see, it's getting dark. It's uh, just gone six o'clock. There is boats on the reef in Prickly Bay. Our friends have had a wave go past them and a squid jumped out and landed on their table. So I don't know if he's having it for dinner, but um, so far so good, we're okay. Keep checking the lines, seems to be good. So Merle, how is it on your first anchor watch? I don't know, I've only been up here for three and a half minutes. <laughs> I've, already, I've already fallen over twice. Yeah. It's Not a, a bit, drop of drink. It's a bit rolly, isn't it? It is. It's very interesting. 
as it got darker, it just got worse and worse and worse. The swell changed so it was hitting us on the beam and the whole boat was going like over side to side and then front and back and then waves were hitting us. I learned what it's like to be a Yahtzee cube in a, in a cup and a dice game. Because <laughs> we got thrown around up and down, left and right, back and forth. The noise was excruciating. The boat was creaking and every single thing in all of our cupboards was smashing into the cupboard. On a few occasions, the cupboards broke loose. Everything went across the boat. You couldn't walk. You couldn't stand up. I mean, you couldn't sleep. I've never ever had such a horrific night sleep. In fact, I didn't sleep. Every direction that uh, Britikin could toss us, we did. Uh, but she stayed fast to her mooring. It was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. And I totally, you know, underestimated that this tropical storm that went above us would cause such a reaction to the surrounding, you know, the, the waves and the, the swell and the wind. I, I really, I didn't, I didn't think this was going to happen. And it sucked. And I felt so bad for our guests. You know, that was quite an experience. I don't necessarily want to do it again. But, yeah. but what the heck? It was just a another part of the experience. I never ever got scared, I never got concerned because you've got Simon on board, you've got uh, Kim and the utmost confidence in her boat, um, and I had to step confidence in them. The day after Tropical Storm Karen passed, we had an awesome survivors party where we could decompress from all the stress, strain, and lack of sleep. A few of our cruiser friends were happy to share their stories. Here they are. Chris Berry on Temerity, my wife Laura. Um, so your question was, what did we do in this tropical storm? Uh, first of all, it was a little unexpected. I don't think most people expected it to turn into a tropical storm. Obviously it did. We were fortunate in that we had been to this Hurricane Mole in anticipation of uh, Hurricane Dorian, or what turned out to be Hurricane Dorian. So we had the tracks, we knew where we needed to go. Uh, once we made the decision that our situation was untenable, we uh, we set sail, we got everything squared away, we did the two hour trip around, worked our way in and into probably the best hurricane hole in the Caribbean. Uh, last night when everybody was dealing with 25, 30, 35 knot winds, we had 12 knots. Uh, so we feel very fortunate. It's a matter of fortuitous uh, contingency planning that turned out to work for us. So. Fingers crossed, we hope we don't have to do it again, but we may. Uh, well, well done, Chris, well Thank done. You. Yeah, yeah. well, Simon saved us, uh, helped us save our boat the last time we were in bad weather, so anything I can do, I'm happy to do it. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Bye-bye. Dave Terrell, uh, and my wife Jill and I are on uh, Bacatti. And what happened with you in uh, Karen popped her ugly head up. Uh, well, we were uh, kind of surprised as most everybody that it turned into a tropical storm. We were actually um, in Prickly Bay and we uh, had committed to a friend to look after his boat, so uh, leaving really wasn't um, wasn't really an option for us. Um, we did move the boat. Uh, we were anchored really close to some other boats, or shall I say some other boats that anchored close to us. Uh, so we uh, we moved, after we um, battened down our buddy's boat a little bit more, we moved our boat out, set the anchors uh, you know, with full throttle, rode it out. We uh, we didn't have any problems. Um, when the wind shifted, I think we, we might have um, drugged maybe 10 feet. There was a lot of other boats drugged. There was at least two. I think one hit a reef and then one uh, ended up on uh, Calabash Beach. Um, there was a uh, catamaran uh, real close to us. Uh, blew out his bridle. Um, so a bridle, uh, there's a line coming from each hull to a center ring and then from there there's another line that goes to the anchor chain. And he had blown out that uh, that center line that goes to the anchor chain. And uh, so you can imagine uh, on a catamaran uh, the line comes out from almost center of the boat. So the thing was just, just gone uh, horrendously and the chain was just slapping the hull and so he put out a call on the VHF for some help. So I went over there in the dinghy 
And mind you, this is you know, probably five foot seas, at least four or five foot seas. Uh, so, so even getting in the dinghy was fun. Getting on his actually was, was reasonably easy. Uh, that was pretty easy. Um, but then uh, we uh, we fished a line, got him a new bridle set up. And uh, going back to the boat, it probably took me 10 minutes to get back on our boat. Uh, but we ended up riding it out. There was um, uh, a lot of boats of drug. We were uh, lucky not to have drug in the anchorage. You know, on anchor, I mean, you just, the boats are just like hobby horses, just, just uh, pretty insane. Again, luckily, uh, luckily we didn't have any problems. Okay, great. Thanks, Dave. Bye bye. Travis, and the name of our boat is Party of Five. What was your experience with the uh, tropical storm Karen? I'll be brutally honest. We didn't think she was going to be as bad as she was and we were complacent and we stayed where in Prickly Bay where we probably shouldn't have. So when the storm arrived, uh, after being completely calm all day long, it showed up about 3.15, uh, it was bad. It wasn't so much the wind, it was the waves, it was huge breaking waves in Prickly Bay. We had about nine foot waves inside the bay and it was coming from the direct south which put all the boats on the lee shore um, so yeah it was a very uncomfortable and unpleasant experience that we learned a lesson from so the lesson is is you shouldn't get comfortable what your gut tells you to do you probably should do it was no skin for us to move to a different bay however we just stayed and we really shouldn't have done that we should have just taken the time, lifted her anchor, and gone somewhere else. Yeah. So we paid the price and had a really rough night riding nine foot waves all night long. Well, thanks, Travis. Yeah, no worries. Cheers. Thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed it and would like to watch more videos, please subscribe because every Tuesday we put out a video. We have others about hurricanes and tropical storms. Here's a couple of suggested ones to have a look at. Especially if you have time to prepare for a hurricane, this is what we've done in the past. And if you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up.